What's going on, guys? Kyle Marla here with Vanishing Inc. I'm here with my buddy Andy Gladwin here in the UK. Uh, Andy, thanks for hanging out with us, man. And, Thank uh, you. We're here to talk about your new effect, Magic Squared, uh, which is a new Magic Square, hence the name Magic Square. And I'm a big fan of right. Magic Squares because I'm just a big dork and nerd and I love math and, and solving things. So uh, tell us about the new... Well, actually, well, before you kind of tell us, but how, how did you come up with this kind of crazy idea because this is really different amongst most magic squares yeah so so the, the key difference of which i guess there are three key differences in this routine the first one is i i don't uh, use a board where i start writing stuff down i use uh, number cards i use uh, cards with numbers on them uh, so the deck is shuffled and then i'm able to to find a magic square from it the next one is that the cards stick to this board so everybody can see it if i get anything that sticks to this board it's some sticky material we'll talk about that later and then finally, at the end, I've done the magic square. I then turn the board over, and the numbers add up to a totally different number, uh, upside down, a uh, second selected number. As for how did I create it? Well, I realized that this would be the perfect board for Justin Flom's card artistry. Right. Which is also you know, one of my favorite effects. Pizza, right? yeah. uh, it's a great effect. Uh, and when, um, so, so this way, I prefer to do it like this, so it plays for a bigger audience instead of uh, on the table. And when we were originally talking to Justin about releasing Card Art Street, I had an idea of doing a Magic Square because it's a 4x4 grid, so it deals out perfectly. Sure. And then by adding this uh, board, I realized it would be great to do uh, the reverse as well. I'm not the first person to do a reverse in a Magic Square, by the way. There are other people, uh, but this whole combination of full routine is what I'm really proud of. Uh, to answer your question more about how I created it, well, I'm actually not very good at maths myself, so I am a computer programmer, mm -hmm. so I decided to um, write a program to come up with how to do this, basically. So uh, the trick is, uh, perhaps one of the first ever, I don't know, but uh, one of the very few tricks in the world where it was a computer program designed the method, not me personally. <laughs> Which so is the way, because you're basically cheating. Uh, yeah, the, whole exactly. of, the whole point of Magic Square is that you just can do it, right? Exactly. Uh, but what that allowed me to do is come up with the lowest numbers possible that are reversible. Uh, whereas uh, other people, uh, for example, my friend Chris Wardle, I think is the first person to come up with uh, a reversible magic square that adds up to two different numbers. Uh, and he's great. Um, his his quite, are quite high numbers. Um, but by writing a program, I can get the lowest numbers. Great. So once I come up with this, the big question was, will this really work? Two magic squares? Is that too much? And so I, I performed it, uh, first of all, at, at a magic convention, actually. Uh, it was pretty nerve-wracking, but I got a great reaction. Uh, and then a few weeks later, I did it at another magic convention, and Juan Tamariz was in the audience. And uh, the proudest moment of my life, truly in magic, is he ran up to me after, like, during the show, you know, he kind of snuck out and come around and tell me uh, in the interval uh, that he... He said it was uh, the best magic square he's ever seen, and that was like, whoa, heart pumping. It's sure, just it's amazing. Sure. So that gave me the inspiration to just keep pushing, and, and three years later, it's changed a lot, it's evolved, but I'm so proud of it, um, and great. I'm really pleased to have kind of got there with it. Um, now, another question I had for you is that, uh, because I'm, you know, I'm fair at math, I'm, I'm okay at it, but not necessarily, you know, quick or higher numbers at the same time, which is exactly what your magic square is. So, um, tell us about how you handle the high numbers because you're you're dealing with a regular audience of regular people and they have to you know somewhat follow along with the math and confirm that you're yeah. being accurate well in the trailer it's the highest numbers possible with the deck uh just because of how the method works there are four different numbers they could pick uh, uh magic squares typically you, you want about a, a, a 40 or between 40 and 90 i guess are good numbers uh, i've seen some people do magic squares where it adds up to like 12. it's just it's not impressive enough if you're going to do this big mathematical feat so yeah sometimes you get a, a high number um it's a high number but yet at the same time the lowest reversible number as strange as that sounds um so i have three different tactics i can share for using uh, higher numbers for magic squares whether it be this one or another one uh number one is you have to have the audience fully believe that you are mathematical uh that, they, that you're a match genius basically and the way i do that is i don't slowly reveal the numbers when i'm adding them up on the board where it's like 12 plus 20 is 32 i don't do that Instead, I reel them off so quickly and so confidently that even if you're not adding up along with me, you trust me. So 12 plus 20 is 32. You know, it's, it's so fluent. And with my particular magic square, I'll tell you a secret, those numbers are hidden in the cards. So there's a, a code 
hidden on each card. That means I don't need to do any maths at all. I'm just reading and I can read diagonals, the, the four corners, the middle, whatever, just really quickly without having to truly add them up, uh, which is a, a kind of a big secret, but a useful utility within here. Yeah, it's really, so really great. It's, uh, it's my, my favorite part in a weird way, just because it's um, it means I don't have to think about doing any maths on stage, yet I get to look like a, a maths genius uh, in a weird way. Um, or at least that's my hope, is I look like a maths genius. Uh, so, so that's number one, is, is the confidence. Uh, number two is an idea that John Carney gave me, which is to have uh, four people in the audience, uh, say, take out your mobile phones and use your calculator uh, person number one, add up row number one. Person number two, add up row two, three, and four. And then you get them all at the same time to say uh, the number and it all adds up. So that's another way of having three people just quickly do it, uh, four people quickly do it. That really helps. Uh, the, the third way is something you don't see in the trailer because I performed at the Magic Castle in the trailer and I, um, you're not allowed to take photos of the castle. Uh, but this is something that I use all the time and I, I'm happy for people to use it in, in their Magic Square routine. Uh, I say, um, let me do the exact line. Uh, everybody take out your mobile phones now. I'd like you to take a picture of the board. This is the only magic trick in the world that you get to take home with you. Take a photograph, and when you get home, check my mathematics. So, now this is a weird thing because it means they can't check it until they get home. Uh, but what it does do is it says, well, if he's, if he's letting me take a photo, then of course it has to be sure, correct. Right? Sure. So it really helps that. Uh, and there's some interesting things that this does, uh, namely, People always upload, uh, not always, but often upload the pictures to social media, right. which is great. Um, so there are three techniques that I could talk a, a long time about this, but those three are what I use and, and they help a lot. But also I wanted to mention um, that, you know, and I think this, I, just because I you know magicians are watching this um, this demo video and they kind of, they see, because you were at the in the close-up room, which is only like 20 people at the castle, uh, and yeah. what's nice is that there might be a few people who can chime in, like, you know, blah, 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 plus this equals that. Uh, but also in a bigger theater, you have a larger number of people. And it, it will help because you have other people in the audience who can somewhat follow on, not maybe at the same speed as you, but they can follow mm -hmm. along and help call out numbers. And therefore, the rest of the audience knows if other people in the audience are calling out numbers, then the math must be accurate. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's kind of hard to see this in the trailer just because of how, how we cut it, and also I'm always evolving this. But actually, I've really experimented with the tempo of revealing the numbers so that people want to pitch in. Mm -hmm. um, so let me give you one example. Uh, it's the the third row in the the one five three magic square. I, I go down like this. I do this number plus this number plus this number equals one four three, which means we just need a ten. So now I, I show the ten. So that, that's kind of filled in the gap for them. Sure. Uh, but the next time, I let them add up with me. So I think the number is 60 plus 15 is, and I reach out and someone shouts out uh, 75. So I do that a few times so that people are adding up with me. And that really helps because, you know, it's like the whole, whole brother John Hammond thing of let them fill in the gaps themselves. Spin, but also, cool what's own. nice about that, at that point, they trust you. So then when you go later on and you go really quick or you do the, you know, the double one, then they don't they don't have any worry because they they've known that you're right from the beginning so therefore you're right at the end exactly that you have to build up trust uh, people are not going to add up every number along with you it's quite large numbers uh, but they don't leave thinking that didn't really add up to 153 right they, they leave knowing it does because of all of those things i've talked about which means when you do the big turnover at the end that's important because now I have the trust there, and I can very quickly reveal these. In fact, on the trailer, I'd say I probably reveal it a lot slower than I do now. The trailer was filmed about two years ago. Um, we've been kind of working on this release for a while. Uh, now, actually, I pretty much do the whole reveal in about 20 seconds. I talk through the applause, and we'll find a, a recent performance. We can put it on YouTube uh, to show this, but I talk through the applause, and I'm very quick with it because they trust me, and they know it's definitely going to add up to that second number. Great. And then I think the last question I have for you is that, so the routine uh, itself is solid from beginning to end, but um, it is a little long or it can be long depending. And I think this is important because it's all about gauging your audience because certain people are going to be really into this and certain people might only be into it just enough to do the one magic spray and not doing the turnover. And so this is something that you can kind of most magic squares are like this, but especially yours, it's, you can kind of live edit and and not, like you could do across, you know, across, across, straight up and down, up and down, 
and then yeah. you don't have to do the four corners and you don't have to do the square inside the square and then you don't have to do the reverse if you feel like it's too long, right? Well, yeah, we should never really judge a routine based on how long it is. That's To me, that's not the right um, criteria. The, the right criteria is how strong it is, how fun it is, how interesting it is, uh, how cool, how smart, how funny. There's so many things we should judge. Mm -hmm. Length has never really been a, <laughs> sounds dodgy, uh, never really been a thing uh, for me to worry about. Um, well, I'll, yeah, you, I'll, I'll give you a good example, sorry to interrupt, but like uh, a good friend of mine, amazing Jonathan, I mean, if you've ever seen Jonathan's full show, like in Vegas when he was performing, he basically does like a couple of bits before and a couple of bits after, but his 45 minutes of his show is a, a bill and lemon. But it takes him 45 minutes to get to the to the finale of the lemon because of all this comedy interaction and bits between him. Uh, so you're right; it's not always about the length of a routine, more as if it's entertaining enough to be 45 minutes long or whatever. So. Exactly that. Uh, but I'll give you one thing to, to speed it up, because yeah, you're right, you have to judge the audience. Uh, if I'm working at a comedy club, for example, where the routine is a lot funnier and quicker and that kind of thing, uh, you don't want to be, it's, it's, it's not a maps crowd there, right? It's not, there's, there's nobody there to see maps, so you have to really speed it up. So I do things like this, uh, as I'm going, uh, I add up the first row, the second row, and then I go, and of course, this one plus this one plus this one plus this one, that adds up to one, five, three, two. So I'm just basically, just basically bouncing my finger on it mm -hmm. and not doing any maps. But because they trust me and they know uh, that I can clearly do this, that's fine. So. Yeah, you do want to get through this very quickly. Um, that's that's very important. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you talking to us about Magic Squared. And uh, just lastly, it comes with basically everything you need to perform the effect, uh, except for the board. But it comes with the sticky stuff. Uh, yes, which is uh, invaluable. I, I love this stuff. It sticks. Anything will stick to it, uh, but it doesn't leave any residue, so you can reuse it as much as you like. Right, that's and the it whole will last a long time. sticky stuff. Oh, that'll last ages. Uh, I think this is my second one in three or four years, so yeah, it'll last. Um, it comes with that. You just need to put it uh, on its own board or photo frame. This is just a photo frame I got from Amazon for like uh, the equivalent of about six or seven dollars. pronounced um, Amazon, by the way. Amazon? Yeah. I'm so sorry, I'll pronounce how Joshua J would do it. Let's get it from Amazon. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, you get, get that and you get the deck and you get everything you need, uh, yeah. including a, a DVD of me uh, talking about the history of this and, and how to do it and all these tips that I've given plus many more. Great, man. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk about Magic Squared and I'm hoping this helps anybody who has any questions or concerns about it. So. Me too. Any more, just Brian to Vanish Link. We're all here ready to help. Yeah, thanks, man. Talk to you soon.